Good morning, State Line Church. Thank you all for coming today. And we thank you for all the the, uh, online viewers, the people who get to see us from home, and uh, maybe even later. Thank you for coming. We have an amazing lesson today that uh, John, our pastor's brother, by the way, is giving to us today, which is entitled, How Not to Go Splat. Thank you very much. All right. Good morning, boys and girls. Happy Sabbath. How are you all today? I have a story for you that took place in 2014, nine years ago. Are any of you, or how many of you are less than nine years old? So, wow, I didn't think I was getting old already. (laughs) So, I was living in southern Virginia in a really small town at the time, and it was a beautiful, sunny Sabbath afternoon. And a couple of my friends and I decided to go for a bike ride. Do you guys like to ride bikes? It's a lot of fun, isn't it? And it was a beautiful day, sunny, really small town. And back then, I liked to kind of spike my hair up, and I thought I looked pretty cool. I was like, you know, it's such a small town. It's a beautiful day. I don't think I need to wear a helmet today. There's not much traffic. I don't want to mess up my cool hair. But then I thought, I had, a, I had a voice in my head that said, you know, you probably should wear your helmet, Kevin. So, and I think probably my friends were giving me some advice too, but, but I remember distinctly in my mind, I was like, you know, I probably should wear a helmet. So I go back in the house, I grab my helmet, I put it on, and we're having a wonderful bike ride around town. It was really small town, beautiful day. And on our way home, I was almost home, when all of a sudden I feel this hit from behind. The biggest hit of my life. And the world spun around in just a split second. And everything went black. Everything went dark. But the next thing I know, I'm stumbling around on my feet. And I look down and I see a red spot, or a red area on my leg. And I'm, I, it's like I have tunnel vision because I, I was just hit by a car. And I'm stumbling around and one of my friends was like, Kevin, lay down, lay down. Because we didn't know how badly injured I was. So I, I obeyed him, I laid down. He came up to me, he took his shirt off, and he tied it around my leg like a tourniquet to try and keep the blood from, from going so much, from bleeding so much. And I remember I was, I was panicking. I was breathing heavy and fast. And I was thinking, man, what's going to happen? Like, what if I lose my foot? What if I lose my leg? Will I be able to walk again? Will I be able to drive? And I was so scared. But then all of a sudden, in my mind, I saw an angel. And all of a sudden, this peace came over me. And I thought, you know, it's, it's going to be OK. I know God was telling me, it's going to be OK, no matter what happens. Amen. So. An ambulance came, they took me to the helicopter. They actually flew me in a helicopter to a bigger hospital where they could treat my injuries. And I I praise God because my only injuries were, uh, my leg was cut pretty bad, I did have to have surgery. But then also, I wanna show you guys something. I want you guys to pass this around. I've kept this as a memento, as a, a, a memorial of what God did for me when he protected me. There's some cracks that go all the way through the helmet and some divots from where the gravel, where my head hit the gravel. You guys can pass this around. That would have been my head if I wasn't wearing the helmet. You see, God told me through his Holy Spirit to wear a helmet that day. And I had a choice. I had a choice whether or not I wanted to listen to him and and obey. And you know, when your parents tell you to do something, it's usually for your good. And God the Father is our heavenly parent, our heavenly Father. And when he tells us something, it's always for our good. So I want you guys to remember that we, have cho- we always have choices. We can choose to obey God. We can choose to obey our parents or not. But there are consequences when we don't. It reminds me of this verse, Psalms 91, 11, and 12 that says, God will give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their arms they will bear you up, 
unless you strike your foot, or in my case, your head against a stone. So I want you to remember that, boys and girls. Thank you for listening, and you can go back to your seats now. Our scripture reading this morning is found in John 10.10. 10. I hope you brought your Bibles with you this morning. If you don't have one with you, there should be one right in front of you in your pew. And so please follow along here. John 10, verse 10. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I come that they may have life and have it abundantly. May the Lord bless his word.
You haven't seen our behind the scenes video? Uh. <clears throat> Amazing. Hmm. Let's pray one more time. <clears throat> Dear Father in heaven, we've already invited your presence. But now, Lord, I pray uh, especially for your word to come to life for us. May Jesus be seen and not me. Lord, I <clears throat> pray that my voice will work well enough so people will get the message. Amen. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> I had a real problem. <clears throat> I had way, way, way too much to share. <laughs> You're only getting probably about 20% if that, 15. But it's awesome. This is a great message, and I've loved <laughs> putting it together. So how not to go splat and experience abundant life. Amen. Jesus said, right, the thief, what? Open your Bibles to John 10, 10. We'll read it one more time. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that they may have a life and they may have it more abundantly. Amen. Abundant life comes from Jesus. So the question is, are you experiencing that abundant life? Are you? Are you happy? Do you have joy? Do you wake up in the morning with zest, excited for the day? Do you have real peace? Does your life have purpose and meaning? Do you look forward to every day? With Jesus, you can have that. And I'm going to share just a little bit about how you can obtain that. I found it. It's not complete. I'm sure there's more to be had. But I can tell you what I've got is great, and I love it. <laughs> um, and what I'm going to share with you has worked for millions of people. And it can work for you, too. All right, let's begin. <clears throat> begin at the beginning. Oops, let me get my clicker here. The Bible tells us, in the beginning, God created everything very good. It was wonderful when he created it. The Bible tells us, then God saw everything he had made, and indeed, it was very good. When God says, it's very good. You know it's good. <laughs> right? So next verse. This is God talking to Job. He said, where were you when I laid the earth's foundation, while the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy? Even the angels were excited, all of them. And they were shouting for joy. This was a wonderful creation that he had made. It was really amazing. So in the beginning, it was very good. And then someday soon, God will again make everything very good. Amen. And I'm looking forward to that. The Bible promises, Isaiah 51, 11, Therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing unto Zion and everlasting joy shall be upon their head, and they shall obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and mourning shall flee away. Boy, I'm looking forward to that day. Amen. And then here's another one from Revelation. God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, Amen. 
for the former things are passed away. That's a wonderful promise. <laughs> so in the beginning, it was very good. In the end, it's going to be very good. But right now, it's kind of a horrible. Right? Don't you agree with me? <laughs> this world is a mess. And we don't know half of it. We actually live in fairly peace and prosperity. But there is a lot of pain in this world. And if we knew it, we probably couldn't handle it. And it's terrible. The, the, if you have watched a loved one die slowly of cancer, you know that it's bad. You know that death is an intruder. It was never part of God's original plan. You know what? <clears throat> if you believe in evolution, you are believing a lie. You have believed a lie. And you know it. Because all you have to do is go to a funeral and say, this wasn't the way it was supposed to be. Right? Yeah. God, in evolution, death is the hero. You have to have death. Survival of the fittest. It's good for things to die in evolution. In God's plan, death is an intruder. It's the enemy. It will be done away with someday. All right, so question, why? Why is it so horrible now? What makes the first part so good, the last part so good, and right now so terrible? What went wrong? How's God going to fix it? And more importantly, and this is the key, key part, why do we have pain in our lives? Why do we have hurt? Why do we have suffering in our lives? All right, <clears throat> right now we're going to do a little theory, okay? And you, you kind of have to suffer through the theory, and then we'll get into the practice, practicals, okay? So bear with me. Um, the Bible says, therefore, just as through one man's sin entered the world, and death through sin, Thus death spread to all men because all sinned. In a word, what went wrong? Sin. That three-letter word. Sin is the culprit. Everything horrible in our world is because of sin. Everything. Everything horrible. And what is sin then? We, what is this diabolical thing that's called, causing all these problems? Whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. Okay, so, in other words, it is the easier, simpler version. Anyone who sins breaks God's law. Got it? Simple. Sin is the breaking of God's law. Sin happens when someone chooses to break the laws of God. The Bible has many words for sin. Disobedience, wrongdoing, being evil, wicked. These are all synonyms, right? Okay, here's another Bible verse. Say to the righteous, it will go well with them, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. Woe to the wicked, for it shall be ill with him, for the reward of his hand shall be given him. Okay, so what does that mean? If, you're, if you choose to keep God's law, it'll go well for you. If you choose to break God's law, it won't. I would say that all of the pain in this universe comes from the breaking of God's law. So, in other words, <clears throat> but to those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, wrath, tribulation, and anguish on every soul of man who does evil, both the Jew first and of the Greek. 
You know, back in the Bible times, when the Bible writers said it's for the Jew and the Greek, what were they saying? They were saying it's for the church people and the unchurched people. They were saying it's for the Adventists and the non-Adventists. So what's he saying here? Those that disobey, doesn't matter if you call yourself an Adventist, you're going to hurt. You know, you're going to have indignation, wrath, tribulation, and anguish if you break God's law. Straightforward? Okay, so that's the theory. Now let's talk about practical. What is a law? Have you ever thought about that? What makes it a law? All right, <clears throat> let's go to the dictionary. Definition. And I'm not going to read all these. You can read them, but I'll just kind of, it's a system of rules that regulates the members by the imposition of penalties. Okay, that's one definition. Another one, a rule defining correct procedure or behavior in a sport, or a statement of fact deduced, uh, you know, a natural or scientific phenomenon like a law of nature, or a body of divine commandments. The, you know, this is the Oxford definition. Let me simplify it for you. I'm a programmer. I'm going to introduce you to a little concept in programming. It's called an if-then statement. Okay? If some choice that you choose happens, then some consequence you're going to experience. Okay? In programming, we use this all the time. I think I even probably used it yesterday <laughs> as I was programming. So. An if-then statement, if you choose to break the law, it's going to hurt. You're going to have pain and suffering. Okay? All right. Now let's look at some example laws. Okay? Do you see the if-then statement there? If you choose not to wear your seatbelt, then you get a ticket. Right? Notice, is this a law of God? No. It's a law of the government, right? <clears> that the government says, you know, that they'll impose this law, but it kind of mirrors a natural law, right? If you don't wear your seatbelt and you get in a wreck, it's not going to go so well for you, right? <laughs> I can testify to that. <laughs> we got in a wreck at 60 miles an hour. I'm glad I was wearing my seatbelt. <laughs> I, I probably wouldn't be here today. Anyway, um, also, Kevin, thank you for that children's story. That was wonderful. By the way, if you ever wonder if God works things out, he picked that story unrelated to the sermon. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> But he chose to wear his helmet, and it was a good choice. Amen. So, all right, next. Okay, go ahead, drink and drive. <laughs> Jail, hospital, morgue. All right, what is the condition here? What is, the, what is your choice? You get to choose whether you drink and drive. That would be yours. If you choose to drink, that would be sin, right? And then what is the consequence? The government imposes the first one, jail. But once again, it's mirroring the natural consequence of the hospital and the morgue. They, you know, the government does this because, think about it a little bit, the natural consequence doesn't always come quick enough. Right? I was talking to a police officer. He said, a person will drink and drive like 80 times before they get in trouble. So, um, and so, you know, a person might drink and drive 100 times and nothing happens, but then they get in a wreck. And it's a terrible wreck. And they lose their life and they kill someone else. So the consequences are so bad, the government says, let's impose an artificial consequence jail, <laughs> uh, to get people to stop. Okay, got it? So, um, 
bullying and harassment is against the law. Any breach will result in disciplinary action. Once again, bullying and harassment is the sin, and the consequence is disciplinary action. Some laws don't need words. Okay? <laughs> you, don't, you get the picture. You, if, okay, what's the if then statement? If you put your fingers where they ought not to be, then they might get reformed <laughs> in ways that would cause you pain, suffer, pain and suffering. Maybe not death, but at least pain and suffering. Right? Okay, here's another one. Sorry, bear with me, I'm having fun. I like these signs. <laughs> Please be safe. Do not stand, sit, climb, or lean on the zoo fences. If you fall, animals could eat you, and that might make them sick. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so so the, the consequence to the animals is they might get sick. The consequence to you is you might get eaten. <laughs> All right, so uh, here, one more. Unstable cliff area. People and dogs, this, uh, this law applies to dogs as well as hu uh, humans, <laughs> have been injured falling from these cliffs. Stay back from the edge. So once again, the, all of these signs are warning. So if you look at all of these, Let's consider them all just for a moment. You have the freedom to choose. You can choose to obey and be righteous and good things will happen. Or you can choose to disobey, break the law, bad things happen, right? These signs are just to inform you how best to choose. We have the word of God to inform us how to choose. Are you reading it? Are you immersing yourself in God's truth? Because if you don't, you might hurt. Okay, <laughs> let's talk about that last one, the law of gravity. This is one of the fundamental forces that holds the universe together. Think about it. You're all sitting here and not floating up there. Right? Because of gravity. gravity. Right? You've seen people in space where they don't have gravity. Um, the planet, our Earth, is orbiting around the sun because of gravity. I talked to a, a physicist at Walla Walla University, and he said, the scientific community has no idea where the law of gravity came from. They have no explanation from it. How did it evolve? Actually, here, let me show you. Science can explain it. Here's a formula. Sir Isaac Newton figured out this formula back, you know, hundreds of years ago. And, you know, you have two bodies of, with mass and a distance between, and they're all related. But where did, how did that evolve? I'll tell you how it came about. God created it. Amen. It's simple as that. <laughs> We don't have to have rocket science, you know. This is simple. The Bible says it. It's true. You can trust the Bible. If you can't trust the Bible, you're not a Christian. Right? Thank you. <laughs> anyway, so this law, like all of the laws, favors the obedient. Okay, so here's a scenario. Let's say that I come here and I stand on the edge of a cliff. Ooh, nice view. And someone says, you want to experience a real thrill? Jump off. It would be very thrilling. <laughs> and maybe even terrifying if I knew what was coming. But, you know, they said they, they would lie to me and say, you will experience, they might tell a partial truth you will experience an amazing sensation, one you've never felt before. It's gonna be awesome. You'll love it, right? <laughs> Briefly, <laughs> I heard that, yeah, exactly. 
So let's say that I choose to jump. So I jump off, and I am flying, and it is amazing, and it's wonderful, and I, I'm going through the air, but sooner or later, I'm going to go splat, <laughs> right? And it's not going to feel good. Actually, I might die, <laughs> and then I won't feel anything. <laughs> but it's going to hurt. That's what happens when you break God's law. I was breaking the law of gravity. Got it? When you break the law, bad things happen. Okay, was the law bad? No. It's great. Gravity is an important thing. We have to have it. Then what caused the problem? I believed a lie. I believed someone saying, jump, you'll experience great things. And I, it's partially true. But they didn't tell me about the splat part, <laughs> right? I based my choice, my decision on a lie. So how do you avoid going splat? Base your decisions on the Bible, on truth. OK, let's uh, talk about some other laws of God. Oh, we'll go through these real quick. I'm going to run out of time. So we have physical laws. I was just explaining that. The law of gravity, law of physics, all the things you learn you know, in physics class. What about the law of nature? Let me give you, illustrate this. Okay, we have a farm. We don't plant tomatoes in the snow. It just doesn't work out very well. Okay, or zucchini. Those of you who have gardened, you're smiling, right? You know they'll just die. And so there's an amazing network of laws that God has put in place. Here's some of them, right? That God has created. These are not options. Well, you can choose to create, keep them or choose not to. When you're farming, you can choose to plant tomatoes in the snow or not to. If you want it to turn out well, you won't, <laughs> OK? <laughs> the, 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 the general rule for all of these. How about the laws of health? There are laws of health you have to have, right? If you choose to eat a high fat diet, you know, a high cholesterol diet, uh, if you choose not to drink a lot of water, if you choose to not get sunshine and go exercising, you're going to get sick. It's going to hurt. It's not going to be fun. You know, you might have a heart attack. You might, you know, lose some capabilities. It's your choice, though. You had the, the you, you didn't have to go back for that second thing of dessert. Let me comment one. Well, I don't think I'll get to it. I don't know. Maybe I will. We'll see. Let me comment just real quick. Um, some of these laws have immediate effects, right? I jump off a cliff. It didn't take too long before. <laughs> the, the effect is obvious. So on those kinds of laws, usually we're like, OK, I get it. But some of these laws are slow in coming. The consequence isn't the immediate. And, and so that's deceptive. Anyway, laws about sexuality. Oh, boy. This can be a huge source of pain. Now, let me just tell you right now, God created sex. He knows how best to make it work. <laughs> Follow what he says in the Bible, and it'll turn out well. Amen. Don't do that sexual identity stuff, you know? If you were born a, born a boy, you're a boy, okay? Or a girl, you're a girl. Don't say, well, I don't know what I feel like inside. Don't go by feeling, go by what God created. I could go on anyway. <clears throat> finances. There's rules about finances. Leadership. <clears throat> rules about finances. Paying tithe. Right? Is that a law? Well, it's a principle that God lays out in the Bible. And God blesses abundantly when you do. Yes, amen. The golden rule. <clears throat> dealing with others. Uh, Matthew 7, 12 says, Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them. This is the law and the prophets. 
Okay, now we're getting to the bottom line. The Ten Commandments. You know? Do it. <laughs> God, this is God, this is God speaking, personally telling his people how to thrive. And if he told them we're all people in this world together, the same thing applies to us. <laughs> same thing with uh, the, the greatest commandment, Jesus said, you shall, this is Matthew 22, 37, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and your soul and your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Do this and you will live. The key to life, abundant life, is obedience. Okay, okay. So, why then? Why is there so much pain and suffering and hurt in the world? Because people aren't keeping God's law. Why aren't people keeping God's law? <clears throat> Have you ever thought about that? I'll tell you why. One reason, there's an enemy. And the enemy is Satan. And we'll go, go through this real quick. God created Lucifer perfect, the Bible says, Ezekiel 28. The devil made himself, uh, Satan made himself a devil by breaking God's law. What commandment did Lucifer break? You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul. He broke that one. And Jesus said, that's the big, big one, <laughs> right? So he broke that one, and then all of a sudden, he, things didn't go, go so well for him. He experienced pain and loss. How do you know? There was war in heaven. Revelation 12. What war do you know of that has happened where there's no pain and loss? There was war in heaven. Satan was losing. He was kicked out of heaven. He faced possible total destruction. And in the midst of all that, God created our world. And Satan said, I'm going to get man to join my side. And <clears throat> Satan says, I'm going to convince him. Well, Satan ultimately wanted to bring pain, suffering, and death to man. He wants to bring that to you and to me. And based on everything we said, how's he going to do it? He can't reach, he couldn't reach Adam and Eve to smack him one. He couldn't shoot him with an AK-47. He couldn't kill them in any way that he possibly could. The only way he could get them was to lie to them and convince them to break God's law. Because as soon as they broke God's law, he could say, okay, God, you said, keep your word. They got to die. Ooh. What a diabolical guy. And he wants to get revenge on God. He wants to kill God's children. Because he knows God loves you. And, he, and if you have a parent, if you're a parent, and someone is beating up on your kids, ooh, you know, <laughs> mother bear, <laughs> you <laughs> don't go for that. And it really hurts as a parent to see your children suffer. And that's what the devil wanted. He wanted to hurt God. But Adam and Eve were protected. So here was the devil's plan. Oh, first off, I'm getting ahead of my notes. John 8, 44. If you turn there in your Bibles, let's read it. Jesus, John 8, 44. Jesus said, talking to the Pharisees, you are of your father the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning 
and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources for he is a liar and the father of it. Jesus is saying, the devil cannot open his mouth without speaking lies. That's just his fundamental language. And he's convinced people all through the world with his lies so that they choose to break God's law. And that's what brings us pain and suffering. So his goal was to murder Adam and Eve. The Bible says he was a murderer from the beginning. And he, by convincing them to break God's law. All right, so turn in your Bibles to Genesis 2 and 3. <clears throat> We're going to go through this real quick. All right, so here is, actually, let's turn in your Bibles there. And the Lord commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. This is Genesis 2.16. The Lord commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you may not eat, for in the day you eat of it you will surely die. Okay, so here was the look, God's truth. Here's the offense statement. If you eat the forbidden fruit, then you will die. Simple as that. And how does it look? This is how it looks. If, you know, basically, here's the tree of life. Here's the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Eat the tree of life. Don't eat that one. Simple. And if you eat of that one, you're going to die. You're going to go splat. So, Genesis 3, verse 4 and 5. <laughs> then the serpent, which is the devil, said to the woman, You will not surely die. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. He promised three things. Okay? Here's the devil's version. The lie. If you eat the forbidden fruit, then you won't die. Opposite of God's, basically calling God a liar. And you'll become like God. And knowing good and evil, you get to decide what is right and wrong. Won't that be wonderful? Right? Does he still do that today? Does he still convince people you can decide what's right? Truth is relative. My truth is not like your truth. Liar. So here's the devil's lies in picture form. Eat of this tree and it'll be wonderful. Right? And so what happened? He believed the devil's false reality. That it was good for food. Uh, the Bible says, all right, Genesis 3, 6. So when the woman saw the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, there were three good reasons for taking the fruit. Right? You saw it right there. Good for food. Not really, but she believed it. <laughs> that it was pleasant to the eyes. That word pleasant, that's like lusting. You know, the, the Hebrew word for lust. Like, mm, like, you know, when you see a chocolate cake or something. <laughs> like, ooh, you know, drawn to it. And, uh, and then she, um, and desirable to make one wise. Great good can happen from this. This is amazing. What an opportunity that I have, right? Oh, anyway, so she chose to eat. It made total sense. Her, what was her downfall? Her downfall was lingering near the tree. Do we still do that today? So the result was she chose to jump. And she didn't immediately go splat. In fact, she probably had an immediate, somewhat positive experience. 
because she immediately became an agent of the devil and went to her husband and said, hey, look at this. This is amazing. I'm not dead. In fact, I've, I'm feeling amazing. You should try it too. But what really happened? Did they die? Yes. Did they become like God? No. Did they get to determine what was right and wrong? No. All three of the devil's claims were false. But he's very convincing. And he's still convincing today. How about you and me? Do we have pain and suffering in our lives? I propose that all pain and suffering in our lives is from sin. Either ours or someone else in it. We can't control what other people do to us in our lives, but we can control our choices and we can control our state of mind. Okay? Someone might completely wreck my life, but you know what? I can choose whether or not to let, me, let that get me down. I can rise above the troubles of this world by God's grace with his help, not of my own, Amen. but God provides that to us. And so all pain and suffering, I would say, are because of we bought into a lie of the devil. <clears throat> John 10.10, 10, our scripture. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and destroy. Do you see how the devil did that? The thief. I came to steal and kill and destroy. But Jesus says, I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. Jesus has life for us today. It doesn't matter that we've tasted of the fruit. We can have forgiveness in Jesus. You know, it's like we've jumped off the cliff. We're going to go splat. It's going to be bad. And Jesus jumps off with a parachute. And he gives it to us and says, here, you take it. And then he doesn't make it. That's amazing. That's love. All right. Well, we've got about 10 minutes. <clears throat> so here's some lies of the devil versus God's truth. These are, you know, <laughs> when I started listing out all the lies of the devil, oh man, I, this is just the beginning, okay? I, I'm not even going to go through all these. You can do this on, this is homework. Okay, take a picture of it. Go, go for it at home. Think about these things. <laughs> Think about how it makes people go splat when they believe them. All right, and here's some more of Satan's false realities. Remember, he painted a false reality. Do we have any false realities today? How about movies? That is a complete false reality. How about video games? How about YouTube? That is presenting, how about social media? That is presenting a reality that's not true. That's right. And it's programming you, little by little, while, you know, movie by movie. Uh, you are being programmed by the devil to accept his false reality. And you might think, Oh, it won't affect me. And maybe not instantly. But he's smarter than you think. Anyway, I've, I have something about absolute truth here. <laughs> and, and other things. All right. Let's go with this one. This is the AIM-9 Sidewinder air-to-air -air missile. You want to know about these? These have been around for a long time. I think it was one of the first major successful air-to-air -air missiles that was developed back in the 1950s, I think. Amazing missile. <clears throat> they, and they've had a lot of development since. 
over 270 kills with this missile. So it's very effective over, over through the years. Um, and it's, it's, you know, go on a fighter jet and they'll launch it to shoot down an enemy, okay? How do these missiles work, okay? It's very intense the way these missiles work because they only have a limited time, a limited window of time, and they have to be extremely focused and go extremely fast as they, they pass the speed of sound because they've got to catch up with the enemy and take it out, right? So it's extremely intense, very focused, and it's continually seeking, heat seeking, it's a heat seeking missile, and turning and repeating until success, okay? So where's that heat, where's that heat, where's that heat? And continually looking, 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 and say, it's over there, okay, I'm going that way, it's over there. You know, continue, continually doing that until it gets to the airplane and blows it up, okay? So, here's a Bible verse I want you to think about. Seek ye the Lord while ye may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Amen. So, we are like this heat-seeking missile, right? We are seeking God, you know, seeking eternal life, but seeking to follow God uh, as much as we can. And we are continually going through that loop, right? So how should a Christian live? Intense, 100% focused on God's kingdom, okay? We only have a window of time. It's called our life. Once our life is over, we're done. We need to reach our goal, you know, the goal that God has for us in that window of time. We need to be continually, continually seeking, looking for God's word and leading, turning, you know, adjusting course, turning away from sin, turning toward God, continually repeating until we have success. And success would be that we find that relationship with Jesus, that we obtain <coughs> eternal life, and that we obtain that peace and joy now in this life. But what defensive measures have they come up with for this? So they've come up with these flares. In other words, if you're uh, an aircraft and one of these heat-seeking missiles is coming after you as fast as it can, the flares go out and basically say, it's over here, it's over here, you want to go over here? And that missile is so intense and so focused, just a little bit of deviation, distraction from the target will get it off base and it'll miss the target, right? So, uh, let's see if this works. How do flares work? Present many stronger fake targets. Are you getting the picture? Fake lies, you know, deception. Confuse and distract <clears throat> the infrared heat seeking sensor. Cause the missile to turn away from the real target and the missile gets lost and never reaches its goal. And here, we'll see if this works. This is a YouTube video. Oops. Well, whatever. <laughs> so much for YouTube, go watch it later. <clears throat> so, how does the devil work? He presents many stronger fake sources of happiness. Temporary. To confuse and distract people. To cause people to turn away from their real target. People's lives are lost. They never find God, happiness, or reach him. That's the sad fact. But it doesn't have to be that way, right? Well, 
so much for that. <laughs> it doesn't. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Amen. Let the wicked forsake his way, and an unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return unto the Lord, and he will abundantly pardon. Amen. But we have to turn to God. Amen. Remember that the devil's out to get us. And if you don't see that, you are deceived even worse than you think you are. Okay? <laughs> but, and he is so sneaky, <clears throat> he doesn't want you to. Let me tell you a quick story. My parents had, um, in the cupboards of their kitchen, had um, one day opened it up. Oh, these little black droppings. Hmm. Mice. So they said, like, six mouse traps. Put peanut butter, all that good stuff on it. And the next day they came back, <laughs> clean as a whistle. They were all gone. It, and no, no mouse. He must have really enjoyed it, but guess what? The next day we had a mouse. The devil wants to get you, and he's going to get you. You need to spend time in God's word. If you don't, you're going to go splat. Okay? You need to call out to Jesus and say, Jesus, I need you in my life. I need your help. You can't do it by yourself. You can't. I can't. And by the way, anything good that you've seen me, you know, in this message or whatever, it's only from him. And he'll do it for you too. But you need to ask him and turn to him. Anyway, let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you so much that you are on our side, that you want to see us succeed, that you want to see us reach heaven, and more than that, reach happiness and a fulfilled life now. Thank you, Lord, for promising to help us and be with us. May we turn to you in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Well, thank you for listening, and come again next week. For our closing hymn, let's stand and sing 341, To God Be the Glory. Hello, my name is James Ash, and I want to thank you for watching Stateline Advent Media. If you like what you saw today, make sure and check out our content on YouTube, Rumble, Facebook, or Gab. All you have to do is type in Stateline Advent Media, and it should pop right up to the surface. Remember to like and subscribe. And if you'd like to find out more information how you can partner together with us in our ministry, go to www.statelineadventmedia.org. Thank you and God bless. Oh,